Hi, welcome back to Moose Chemistry. This is Lewis Structure Lesson Number 6. Lewis structures represent the number of valence electrons around each atom in a compound structure. Remember that two dots is equal to a dash. And when we talk about hybridization, we only count the unshared pair electrons and the shared electron pair is represented by the dash. Okay? Also in hybridization, S has one spot, P has three spots, E has five spots, F can hold up to seven spots. And one more thing, formal charge is going to be valence electrons minus non-bonding electrons minus bonding electron pairs. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at the compound. Let's figure out how many valence electrons we have. We look at the first element, sulfur. It's in group 16, so we have six valence electrons. snarly, eh? Okay, we look at oxygen. It's also in group 16, which is going to bring an interesting point up in just a few minutes. All right, now let's go ahead and do this. So sulfur brings one sulfur to the table with six electrons. And there are four oxygens coming to the table, also with six electrons. Okay, so we draw our line here, and that gives us six electrons plus 24 electrons. Oh, but look at this negative two. That means we have to add two electrons to the mix. So this will give me a total of 32 electrons. Pretty cool, huh? So now, which one's the core? Well, normally we talk about the docking ports, right? But both sulfur and oxygen have the same number of docking ports. But in this case, sulfur, there's only one of them. And you have four oxygens. So it would behoove us to put sulfur as our center. So then we're going to wrap our oxygens around them. Just like this. Okay, first thing we'll do is we got to connect the sulfurs. The oxygens. And then we have to give each oxygen its octet. Now, we need to check this to see this is the best possible structure. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we go to the formal charge of sulfur. It's going to be six valence electrons minus their zero non-binding electrons minus bonding pairs, which there are four of them there. So that would give me a plus two. Ooh. Hmm. Let's try one of these oxygens. Formal charge of oxygen is going to give me six, right? Valence electrons comes to the table with minus non bonding pairs, there are six, minus bonding pairs, which is one. So that's going to give me a negative one. Huh, interesting. Okay, so now we have this as negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. And this is the plus two. But there's still something not quite right. Our core really should be zero. So this is not the best possible structure. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to erase some things. And we're going to have to redraw this. Okay? So let's look at this a different way. We need to make sure that our core is 
zero to start with. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take, for argument's sake, let's take these two electrons away. Okay, and then we're going to draw this like this. And then we're going to put a double bond there. And we're going to maintain the octet by doing this. So that means we're going to do that to the opposite side. Now let's look at our formal charge for sulfur. The formal charge is time for sulfur. Sulfur comes in with six valence electrons. Non-bonding electrons is zero. Bonding pairs, there are one, two, three, four, five. There are six bonding pairs. Look at that. Now our core is zero. Let's check out our oxygens. There are going to be two oxygens here because one of them has a double bond and one has a single bond. So we call oxygen one our double bond one. So oxygen comes up with six valence electrons, minus nine bonding electrons, which are four, minus bonding pair, which are two. Oh, look at that, that's zero. Let's look at the next one, the formal charge of our second oxygen, which is only the single bond. Comes in with six valence electrons, right? Minus, Six non-bonding electrons minus one bonding pair. That gives me negative one. And we have two of those, right? We have a negative one here and a negative one here. Guess what? This is going to give us our minus two that we need. All right, so that's going to mean that this is the best possible structure. But there's another small problem that we have to take care of. It's just a small problem. All right, so first thing you need to do is realize that, hey, wait a minute. Why does it have to be these two? Why can't it be this oxygen and that oxygen having a double bond? Well, we can check that out. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And let's make that work, see if that's going to work. All right, so let's go ahead and try that, OK? So I'm going to go ahead and draw this again. Put S in the center. And we're going to do the double bonds here. And the double bonds here. I'm just going to move them around. I can do that. So can you. And that works. There's one more thing we need to do. One more really important thing. So we're going to take a put both these inside the radical, just like this. You could also do it horizontally. I'm doing it vertically because, frankly, I'm out of space. And then I have one more thing I have to do, and I put a minus two charge there. Okay. Well, that's it, guys. You be snarly, and we'll see you back here. At Moussine Chemistry!